Hi, I'm Patty Parsons and welcome to That's My Story. You know, I'm always on the lookout for feel-good stories that will lead me to that next person to talk with. And I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw a video of a man delivering some sort of a plaque or something that caught my eye. And what caught my eye was that this man was so excited to give this gift or this present to this woman. And this woman was so excited to, to see him and receive it that I thought, Okay, I have to meet this man, and this man is Dale Hache. He was moved to tears while delivering it, and I said, okay, he's got to be on our story. That's my story. So welcome, Dale Hache, to That's My Story. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Do you remember Do you remember the video that I'm talking about? Um, you were delivering uh, like a plaque or something to this woman, and she was just overwhelmed. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, it was a couple of months ago and uh, a lovely customer, which was her friend, had reached out to me and uh, wanted uh, something for her friend. And, and she loved uh, anything to do with Lake Simcoe. And so I had an idea right away in my head and I decided to make the Lake Simcoe uh, life plaque. And basically, I decided, uh, you know what, I'm going to surprise her with this and uh, drove to her house and uh, recorded it. And she was ecstatic. I was ecstatic, too, I'll be honest, because that kind of stuff really, you know, to have community involvement and, and she loves Lake Simcoe so much um, goes a long way. And so for me to do that was absolutely nothing. And to see the look on her face uh, was priceless. Well, and, and for me, it was like, I want to meet this person. And, and so it leads me to ask you, you were making a plaque. Like, is this, this is the business that you are involved in now, right? And the business name is The Naughty Hachets? Yes, correct. Did I said it right? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so the Naughty Hachets is a business that you're in, 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 in Sutton. I guess you're, you're out of Sutton, is that correct? Can correct. you just give us a little bit of knowledge about what uh, the Naughty Hachets is? So the Naughty Hachets is a woodworking slash uh, epoxy company, uh, custom woodworking. So we basically do anything and everything uh, to do with woodworking and, and uh, custom woodworking, um, as well as making full uh, custom epoxy tables, coffee tables, uh, and so forth. Um, all of the products that we do make are made here at, uh, our, uh, in, in, at our house, should we say. Uh, we've got a large garage, and it's uh, something that I've, been yearning to do for, for for many years and it's something that I love doing absolutely love it well and it certainly shows and the passion that you had certainly showed in that video and like always you know when we have a guest on that's my story we want to sort of dig into like how did that happen how did it start and so often Dale the story that you think you're going to tell is not always the story we end up with but I want to start at the beginning of who is Dale Hache. Now, first of all, am I saying your last name correctly? Is it Hache? Hache, correct. It's, so is that sounds like I should have an accent grave or an accent aigu on it. So correct. is your family uh, from, do you have a French background? We do. Uh, my background is Acadian French, and that's from the uh, East Coast, which is Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. Um, that's where my father is from originally, and he came down, met my mother in Toronto many, many years ago, and uh, started a lovely family. So that lovely family, do you have siblings? I do. I have one brother who is the oldest, Stephen. I have, uh, next in line, uh, should I say, is Michelle. Uh, and then we have Patricia, and then I am the youngest of the family. Okay, so there's your family, and uh, so four siblings, and you're the youngest. Correct. Okay. And so you grew up in Toronto. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Correct. so let's talk a little bit about you growing up and who were you. So let's talk about where did you go to school? 
I went to uh, school at St. Bridget's originally, which is uh, at, located between Coxwell and Woodvine, just north of Danforth. Uh, that was my grade school. Um, at the end of uh, grade seven, I was, um, I, I've always been very, uh, how should I say, uh, artistic, uh, musically. I can tell. I can tell from the woodwork. So artistic. So what do you mean by artistic? What kind of artistic are you talking about? Um, arts, uh, artistic arts, music, the love of the arts in general. Um, and so I, I've always been a, a singer. Um, it's something that I've always had a passion for. And so when I was younger, um, I had the chance to basically audition for a school uh, which was Cardinal Carter Academy for the Arts. Sure. Um, yeah. And I was accepted. Um, I went there for a year to uh, discover my abilities and uh, understand how to sing. Go ahead. That's a big deal, by the way. To get into to get into that program was a very big deal. Um, not everybody excels and gets into that program. So Correct. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. No, it was. Uh, select Selected people only got in. Uh, there was a lot of part, uh, applicants. And I think from our school alone, there was only a, a very, I think there was only two actually that uh, ended up uh, going. Um, but regardless, uh, it was it was, it was was more of a learning experience for me uh, mm -hmm. to understand how to use uh, my abilities and uh, to enhance my creative side. So do you still sing? I do. I do. I sing, um, not professionally or anything, but I do every now and once and again. Um, I play guitar. Um, I also play a couple of different instruments uh, as well. Um, I've got the ability to make music as well, too, on uh, on computer and programs and stuff like that as well, too. So you just seem to, you seem to be inclined. Are you technically inclined? Yes, yes. Uh, it's always been, uh, technology has always been in my life. Uh, since I was very young, uh, my brother was very technologically advanced when he was young, so it kind of pushed me to to follow in in that kind of footsteps, and it allowed me to uh, understand a lot of uh, technologically advanced stuff um, that not not everyone was getting into back in those days. So I was able to to get ahead in respects of computer programming and other stuff along those lines. So that just keeps you very, very diverse. What was it like for you growing up with friendships? And did you have teachers and friends that, that inspired you? Or did you have any challenges when you were growing up? Um, of course. Um, I was a larger, uh, larger set uh, kid, child. Um, I was always big boned, if you would like. Oh, I get um, it. I get it. Yeah. And so that was quite a, a, a difficult uh, hurdle for me to get over when I was younger. But I did. Um, I was able to basically use my skills that I've when I was younger to uh, advance myself and advance my uh, self worth, if you want to call it, and 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 know that that what I was doing and what I am doing is 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 good, and it gave me a lot of confidence when I was younger. So. There was a couple of teachers um, in high school. There was one specifically. Um, he was my uh, drama teacher at that time. And he was very inspirational for me. Um, so how was he inspirational? Just, he was very real. Um, the words that came out of his mouth, um, he would stop the class like 15 minutes early and just sit there and, and put his hands up and sit back and talk about his experiences in life and 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 give us information that I to this day hold and I even say some of the sayings that he says or he had said to me back in those days and it, it really really uh engraved into me how how fortunate and how lucky you are as a human being that you recognize that and have that person in your life because being young being a teenager struggling maybe with identity or or struggles with weight or or any of those things can really actually just you know change your whole life negatively or positively and it sounds like you were impacted very positively i was i was it, it was uh 
it was a, a gift that I, or, you know, vocal uh, for me was very, uh, I, I was very gifted in the vocal uh, side. And so a lot of people knew that and, and not necessarily that that had any uh, change, but, or had anything to do with anything. But my point is, is that it, it, it gave me the ability to know that regardless of, of, of my physical appearance or anything along those lines, that to me, that didn't matter. And that aspiring to do better in my life was something that I've always wanted to do. That sounds wonderful. So when you were talking, like, say so you went into high school, did you go on and did you do further education? Or what, what did you do with this, with these skills and the singing? What did you do with that? Or did you do anything with that? I didn't to do too much. I'll be honest. Um, I they, they you know, a jack of all trades, if you would like to say it in that kind of sense, master of none. Um, but after uh, high school, um, I decided that I wanted to go into the automotive industry. And uh, I worked with my father for a little bit. He was in the automotive industry for uh, 40 years as what a mechanic. Did your father do? Sorry. What did your father do? Do you mind me asking? Uh, he was a mechanic. Okay. Uh, at, at, a, at a facility downtown Toronto, a Cadillac dealership okay. uh, for 40 years there. Um, but again, master, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Um, he's, uh, we restored a couple of different houses that we were in, uh, renovated this, this and that. He taught me electrical, plumbing, obviously woodworking. And so I, I'm very lucky to have uh, his inspiration in my life and the ability that he gave me, which was knowledge um, of all these different uh, uh, things that I can do and 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 know that I can go ahead and, and go forward in life, gave me the, the tools, in, in my opinion, that I really needed. So you're very lucky. Um, your father, is he still with you? Yes, he is. Yep. He lives with me, actually. Ah, and is that I don't know him, should I say, but regardless. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and I, I believe he was one of the reasons you came up to to uh, Sutton. Correct. Yep. He had uh, asked uh, me to come up. Uh, he's able to go to Cape Breton every year uh, for months at a time. And so uh, I take care of the house down here kind of thing. And, and he he's able to go out there and, uh, and, and see his brothers and sisters and have Perfect. a great time. Yeah. Well, listen, we're going to cut to a commercial and we will be right back and uh, we'll continue on with your story. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Welcome back to That's My Story, and my guest is Dale Hache, and he's been sharing with us his story, and I think, where did we leave off? You you live up in Sutton with your dad, I believe you said, and yes. tell me something, are you married? I that's, am. That's a forward question. <laughs> Jeez, <buddy>. no. Really? <laughs> Uh, yes, I am married. Uh, I'm married to my uh, best friend, uh, who is my wife, uh, Lindsay. And we've been married now for almost five or well, five years now. And uh, no kids at the moment. We have two fur babies. Oh, two fur babies. Wait, two dogs? Yes, we do. And their names? Uh, Floyd. Is that Floyd? Uh, okay. Yes, you got it. But he's uh, nine years old. He's a corgi beagle. He's got an attitude. I'm not <laughs> going to lie. And he does. And uh, my other dog uh, is Nairobi. And uh, she's uh, just over, uh, just at about two years now. She was a COVID pup. And um, she's uh, quite a, a, a ray of sunshine. She's never a, a dull dog ever. Well, so that's like you have a full family, right? We so do. That's, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a perfect family. So yeah. how did you meet Lindsay? Uh, me and Lindsay met through a uh, social media app, uh, Plenty of Fish. Yeah. yeah. And um, basically it was uh, about, she. We, we didn't originally meet up for that reason, if you want to call it. Um, she had a friend who uh was uh pregnant and she knew that i had uh, done photography so she was wanting to meet up and speak about photography 
and um, our friendship at that time pretty much flourished. And a um, couple of months later, we started dating. And then, uh, what, two years after that? A year after that. Uh, <laughs> thank you. A uh, year after that, uh, we got married. So, well, congratulations on that. And now, you know, so you just said, what did you say, jack of all trades? What's it? So, so you were also into photography. So arts. Yeah. Arts is all encompassing for you, I take it. Yes, so yes. you you do photography. Is this a, is this a sample of your photography? And yeah. and what's the name of your photography company? What what is uh, my name of the photography company is Drew Photography. And, and I do get a lot of questions as to why we uh, we chose that name. Well, uh, it's my middle name, and uh, Dale Andrew Hache is my uh, my full name. So uh, Drew Photography was uh, fitting. So something else that you do. Okay, so, so, so Lindsay came to Sutton, obviously, and uh, life went on. And you, you were, were you working now in Sutton? What was, uh, you, you were in the automotive industry? What were you doing? I was still in the automotive industry. I was uh, working down at that time, um, just in Newmarket at a local uh, dealership as a mm -hmm. service advisor. And I'll be honest, a uh, service advisor is... Uh, yeah, at the forefront with customers, and um, it is can be a very stressful job. Um, also, at that time, my mother at that time was unfortunately getting ill. Um, rest her soul, she's passed, uh, but in a better place, there's no doubt. Um, but at that time, it, it put a lot of stress on me. Um, and unfortunately, um, five years, four years, four years ago now, um, I had a uh, heart attack, actually. Um, this was not something that uh, was known, obviously. Um, they because how old are you? You're, you're very young. I'm 39. So, so I was you were like 34 having a heart attack. Correct, yeah. So you, this was a lot of stress that you must have been under. Correct, yes. Um, and it was something really unknown. Um, at the original time that it happened, I thought it was a heartburn, honest to gosh. Um, for uh, almost a month, I kind of let it go. Yeah. Because you would have never thought you were having a, that you were having heart problems. You're 34 no, years old. I'm, I, 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 even though I've always been a heavier set person, I'm very active and I've always been active um, no matter what. And so for me to, to get that realization was quite the, the shock. It very was. Um, but that was white. Sorry, go ahead. So, so did you have to go to the hospital? Like, what, like did you actually have a heart attack? Um, I either was ramping up to have a heart attack or I had just had one. Um, there's certain um, chemicals that get released from the hearts when it's straining to have a heart attack. Um, and they found that in my bloodstream. So they weren't hundred percent sure of whether or not it was a heart attack or I was ramping up to okay. have a heart attack. heart attack. Yes. All of which is scary. Because <laughs> you're new, how is Lindsay through all of this? Because this has got to scare both of you. Correct. Yes. It was quite, uh, it was quite nerve wracking for her. There's no doubt, but she was luckily enough. She was my rock throughout the entire situation. She was beside my bed the entire time, uh, dealing with my grumpiness, there was no doubt. Uh, well, because at times, unfortunately, they were going to uh, put me uh, into the opera to have the operation, uh, but they pushed me back. Um, and they don't, uh, they don't allow you to eat for 12 hours minimum at a time. Uh -oh. So needless to say, I was a, a I was a hangry man. <laughs> I really was. And, and, and she was dealing with that. And then obviously the whole stressful situation as well. Um, so it put a lot of stress on her. It really did. There's no doubt. So did they actually do an operation? Did they put stints in or is that what happens? Yeah, they, uh, they go in, uh, they went in through my wrist uh, it's one of the biggest arteries that has direct passage to your heart. And yes, they did an angioblast, which is they basically clean out the built up plaque that was in the uh, artery or was in the hallway, if you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they put a stint in as well, two stints, if I'm not mistaken. So, 
this is a physical experience. It's kind of an emotional wrenching experience for a 34 year old man who literally is sort of like faced with, whoa, this, I could have died. I'm thinking, tell me, how does that change you? What, what, what happened for you? Is there a cathartic experience moment that you have now as a result of this? Yes. Um, for me, it was a, a very pivotal point in my life, um, realizing that um, I need to really start taking better care of myself and understanding myself and my body and uh, my mental well-being as well, too. Um, obviously, that was a big factor with as to what had happened. Um, so at that time, um, my wife had gone through a couple of different uh, dietary programs and this and that, but we never found any that really stuck. Um, and we found one that really, really worked well for me um, and her at the time as well. And um, I stuck through it and I was able to lose almost about 100, 115 pounds, uh, give or take. That's kind um, of a person. That's like you lost a person. Yes. A third of a person. Well, I, was, I was 300, uh, sorry, I was 346 pounds. Uh, at my biggest weight, and uh, I'm well below uh, 240 now. Um, feeling great, and um, yeah. This is, you know, it, 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 the journey of health and making these decisions and then being able to stick to it. Is this something that you have always done, or is this something that was sort of a new revelation for you that you actually, you know, were making changes and these changes required this sort of determination and diligence was this something that was part of you always or is this something that you sort of discovered it was something that i discovered it was more or less the findings of myself that i never really knew i had i mean i i, I knew i could aspire and i had had aspire at a lot of different things jack of all trades again but uh within myself no um it wasn't something that i realized until uh, the weight started coming off and realizing that, yeah, you know what, I got this and I, and I can do this. And if I can do this, well, I can do a lot of things. And and, and this is just me, myself and, and my attitude change and, and my physical uh, uh, well-being as well. Everything changed in a good way, including my attitude, including my, my mental well-being as well. Um, and that's really when I found that my life started really changing and turning around in respects of, of being able to be creative and, and focusing my, my, my powers uh, to my abilities. And that's kind of where the naughty hashes came into place. Um, we originally started with just doing um, scrabble tiles and, and it's very, very simple stuff, like very, <laughs> Uh, large sort of custom Scrabble tiles. So like, oh, you okay, okay. <laughs> yes, basically what it is, is it's, uh, you know, a family um, and you put their names together on Scrabble tiles. Yes. Okay. All together, right. So we started with that. Um, then at one point I just had somebody uh, come up to me and goes, Hey, have you ever worked with epoxy? Would you think that'd be something you'd be able to do? And I said, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I think so. That'd be really interesting to get into. Um, so sure enough, I did my first epoxy job, which was just basically uh, a, a little counter table kind of thing. Um, it's stunning. And, it's stunning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I posted that online. Uh, when I posted that online in uh, on on a social media platform, um, I got a lot of uh, 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 likes, and a lot of people started really liking uh, my stuff. Um, after that, I, I, I saved up some more uh, money and I purchased a CNC router, um, which is basically a computerized router that uh, is all computer programmed and can Perfect. pretty much do uh, almost anything that I tell it to, if you would like to, to call it that, um, which gave me a really big uh, creative ability. And and feeling that I, I, I you know, so I, I've got customers to this day. Who, can you do this? Yes. You know what? I can, no matter what it is. And all. They... <laughs> oh, that's my favorite. Look at that. It's a cribbage board, a maple leaf cribbage board. 
correct. You got it. Uh, these were really uh, great hits uh, when I first started out that uh, helped me to become where we are today. Um, I've sold probably over 50 of those, if I'm not mistaken. What you're looking at here is actually a full 3D uh, picture uh, that was given to me from a, a pup that had passed away. So this is a memorial piece. That's so I'm actually able to take full pictures and carve them into wood. That's absolutely it's beautiful. So it's so interesting to me that you've been able to take all of the aspects of your life of artistry, the technology, and have made it into a, a new business. So if you were just going to sum up where you are right now in your life, the, the, that thing that you want to share with people of who you are and what you've learned, what would it be that you would share? I have been through quite a lot of uh, situations in my life. I've seen quite a lot so far, um, and the situations and what I've seen have really shown me that no matter who we are, um, our, our, our brains are our biggest friends or can be our biggest enemies. And in saying that is that I, I, I've seen both of it from both my sides since my heart attack. Um, it's been a quite a positive uh, influence on me to uh, obviously lose quite a lot of weight. And you can, and, and Dale, I just want to say, I've got to cut you off, but I want to say you are an inspiration. And I want to say thank you for being on That's My Story. And I want you. to say thank you to all our viewers that are going to watch and are watching. Thank you for watching That's My Story on Rogers. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.